Harry's wife, 102.80.2. Archetypes. Bimboing along. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Well, we were treated to another dollop of industrial beige as a consequence of another pod crap posted on Spotify in relation to RC wipes. And yes, Harry's wife reflected on her time on Deal or No Deal as she discussed bimbo. Of course, what she failed to realise was that she talks about being objectified on a show even though she knew full well what it involved. Basically, young Totty going on and opening briefcases. Did she think that she was misled? Did she think, uh, we're looking for somebody to host an arts programme, to sit and talk about in-depth analysis of the arts? You must have a degree in modern art and have an appreciation of all things artsy. And then when she turned up, it was actually, no, we want you to wear a short dress, put in some padded bra, wear false eyelashes, get bronzed up, put on loads of makeup, and then totter around in high heels, smiling at the camera. Oh, goodness, says Harry's wife. I've been misled. I feel so objectified. I feel like a bimbo. I thought I would be here showing how smart I was. Oh, how awful. What a load of fucking nonsense. Deal or no deal, suitcase girl means short dress, show off your legs, show off your tits, smile, it's tits and teeth, darling, tits and teeth. That's what you're going to do. And they will have made it quite clear. And now to bang on about saying that, oh, I felt objectified. Well, why did you do it then? You consented to it. You knew what you were getting into. Nobody misled you. But of course, there's plenty of commentary about it that underlines, of course, the idiocy of Harry's wife in this regard, demonstrating the way that she behaves. Of course, what we face here is, in effect, a revision of history by Harry's wife, whereby she willingly went on this television programme, knowing full well what it was, and in the circumstances, then finds herself, later on, wanting to revise history for the purpose of fitting a narrative for her RC Wipes radio podcast. She needs to revise this history to try and, in effect, erase what happened. As we know, there's been plenty of allegations about individuals involved in purging some of her behaviours from the internet. However, with her appearance on Deal or No Deal, that couldn't be expunged. And instead now, what Harry's wife has done is because she's tr sought to reinvent herself as this holier-than-thou bananatarian, that because she can't delete that, she has to try and expunge it in an alternative way by saying, I was misled and I was objectified and what a terrible show, completely ignoring the fact that it's patently obvious to everybody you knew what you were getting in for, that was the gig. And thus, once again... The short-term nature of her mid-range narcissism is laid bare. In an attempt to revise history to assert control in the now by basically saying, yes, um, that programme kind of presents a problem for me, doesn't it, with regard to the narrative that I like to put out these days about being a, an independent, strong, empowered bananatarian. So I need to somehow revisit that and remove it. In trying to do that to assert control because it presents a threat to her control, all she does is invite lots of people to go, that doesn't make sense, you knew what you were getting into, stop talking shit. And once again, Harry's wife's problem is this. Her narcissism is hugely effective at seeking to nullify threats to control and assert control. But then, in so doing, it creates further problems for her, and more and more people are seeing this. But let's find out what the press have to say about it. What's their take on it all? First of all, let's go to the New York Post with an article by Brooke Steinberg. Harry's wife broke down the bimbo stereotype with Paris Hilton in the latest episode of her Archetypes podcast. The Duchess of Sussex, <clears throat> 41, reminisced about her fascinating experience as a briefcase girl on the Deal or No Deal game show while she was pursuing acting a few years before landing her role in the dramatic series Suits. The former actress appeared on season two of the show in 2006, and while she acknowledged that she was 
grateful for the job, she felt she was valued for all the wrong reasons. Harry's wife said she would be on set for the game show and think back to her time as a college intern at the US Embassy in Argentina, where she was being valued specifically for my brain. I have to ask, was she being valued specifically for her ability to use the words guttural and visceral correctly? Or the words archetypes and stereotypes? Or, as she has offended in the very pod crap that we're talking about, were use of the word equity? Here, the article continues, I was being valued for something quite the opposite, she said about deal or no deal. No fucking shit, Sherlock. There was a very cookie cutter idea of precisely what we should look like, Harry's wife added. And of course, that was a fucking surprise to you, was it? Sharing that girls would line up at tapings for different stations where they would put on lashes, get extensions put in or get padding in their bras. And they even received spray tan vouchers every week. But if you're black, Harry's wife, why do you need spray tan vouchers? It was solely about beauty and not necessarily about brains, she said. Really? Fuck me sideways. Riddle me confused. I hadn't realised that being hired as a briefcase girl meant that you were required for your brains. I thought you were there, of course, to discuss the statistical probabilities of the outcome of the decisions that the contestant was making. Or perhaps in your suitcase, you had a series of equations that were there to be worked out. Maybe you had the secret nuclear codes that had to be deciphered that would bring world peace. Harry's wife shared one detail she would never forget when one producer on the show, who couldn't pronounce her last name, would scream, Markel, suck it in, repeatedly. She ended up quitting the show, revealing she was thankful for the job, but not how it made me feel, which was not smart. Assertion of control by withdrawal. I was surrounded by smart women on that stage with me, but that wasn't the focus of why we were there, Harry's wife said. I would end up leaving with this pit in my stomach, knowing I was so much more than that was being objectified on the stage. Utter bullshit. You stood there lapping it up, shimming away, standing there with your enhanced boobage on display, flashing your pearly whites, standing with your legs akimbo, lapping up every second of it. Why? Because you're a narcissist and you love the fuel, i.e. the attention that's being provided to you. But now, because appearing on that show doesn't fit with the narrative of being a bananatarian, you need to distance yourself from it. And therefore, your narcissism causes you to come up with this hogwash of saying, I would end up leaving with this pit in my stomach knowing I was so much more than what was being objectified on the stage. I didn't like being forced to be all looks and little substance, and that's how it felt for me at the time, being reduced to this specific archetype. It's not an archetype, you dumb fuck! It's a stereotype! For the episode, Harry's wife interviewed Hilton, who she says built an entire brand out of being the dumb blonde. Not entirely correct about the bimbo stereotype, after admitting she was the most nervous for this interview because she had judged the 41-year-old simple lifestyle. And it repeats matters which I've spoken about in a previous episode about her feeling nervous and embarrassed about judging her and so on and so forth. And it quotes some of the conversation that has taken place. Harry's wife shared that it was hard for her to think about what she would talk about with Hilton when so much of the reality tar's identity was about not leaning into being smart. Well, you should have tons in common then. Hilton shared she was playing the role of dumb blonde while her Simple Life co-star, Nicole Ritchie, was the troublemaker. I almost got stuck and lost in the character, and at some point, it's like lines got blurred and I forgot who I was, Hilton said. And it makes me sad, because I used to be such a free spirit, not so closed off. And I think, with so many things that happened to me during the years, I just closed off in a way in my mind, and I wish it didn't happen. Going through trauma affects you. For me, when you say it's sad, I think it's so sad you don't even get the opportunity, Harry's wife responded. It makes me emotional thinking about it. You don't get the opportunity to start to think about the woman you want to be with the blank slate. When defining the word bimbo with Hilton... Harry's wife admitted she wanted higher aspirations for her one-year-old daughter, Lilibet. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on this idea, because when I hear the word bimbo, I have a very negative connotation to it, she told Hilton. 
I don't see that as an aspirational thing for a woman. I want our daughters to aspire to be slightly higher. I want my Lily to be educated and want to be smart and to pride herself on those things. Here, of course, her daughter is an extension of herself. It appears like she cares about her daughter, but remember, she's a narcissist and therefore she's incapable of doing so. And in the circumstances, what's actually happening here is that it's facade management talking about the way that she regards, the way that she wants her daughter to be viewed. What are the comments below the line, however? What do the people of the New York Post tell us? Roscoe P. Coltrane. She was only opening a case. It's not like she was smart enough to touch a letter that was lit up to help solve a puzzle. Miss B. It was deal or no deal, not jeopardy. What did she think the job involved? It's not rocket science to hold a suitcase. Lily Marlene. Just notice the picture of them in the pink skirts. Most of the models are looking at the contestant. Sparkle is staring right at the camera. She was there to be seen, and the show was just a stepping stone playing the victim once again. LJM. Anyone who says they don't know about how Hollywood operates or have never heard of the casting couch, they have been sleepwalking. She made the choice to go into that business. She's now saying that she didn't know what that world was about or how she would be treated. Really? A brand. Pretty sure she had some idea of what the experience would be like. She took it to earn money. That is all she really needs to say, and not play the victim once again. Corey Citrin, Harry's wife, was underqualified for deal or no deal. William Hayes, she knew the role, and she played the part. She's acting like she was forced. She should consider herself lucky to be paid so well for little work. Happy John, your job was to dress in a sexy short dress and heels, smile and hold a briefcase while everyone stares at you and say nothing. If you didn't think you were going to be objectified, why did you agree to be on the show? Did they tell you that you and the other girls would eventually be forming Hamlet? I wonder what visual cues our snarky Violet cued her in, clued her in. Was it the skanky dresses, the heels, the fake eyelashes? What about the makeup, hair extensions, manicure, pedicure, fake tans, or her fake rack hanging out for the world to see? Which of these finally made her feel objectified as she continues to stand there and smile episode after episode? Mark Smith, geez, our stories are similar, Megs. Like the time I applied for and was hired to work in a club named The Sex Kitchen. To my complete amazement, they didn't want to hear my woke poetry version of Shakespeare or my politically com political commentary on stage. They wanted to take all my clothes off. I was so perplexed. James Hayes, she said the job made her feel not smart. What she should have said is, it made me realise I'm not smart. Night Music. She was on the second season. Not like she didn't know what the show was about. My bet is, when the offers didn't come in pouring in, based on her performance, she cut her losses and moved on, since she's always looking for more fame and fortune. It's only now that she's decided that this narrative doesn't work and she's got to use the whole bimbo thing instead. She sure looks like she's enjoying herself in all those pictures. Couldn't have been that bad. Plenty of comments, and they're all of a similar stance. You knew what you were getting yourself into, and now you want to try and change the narrative. No sympathy whatsoever for Harry's wife in relation to this. But surely there must be someone out there that is going to provide her with some sympathy. Maybe, what about Coburn writing in Spectator? Harry's wife's meeting of the minds with Paris Hilton. I am kind. I have a big heart. I'm an Aquarius. I love animals, and I'm shy. I'm a tomboy. I'm an undercover nerd. I love cartoons, and I'm a girl's girl, says Paris Hilton at the start of Archetype, Harry's wife's podcast about dissecting labels. This time, the label is bimbo, and with an intro like that, Coburn is so glad that Paris doesn't feel the need to play into the bimbo trope. Harry's wife helpfully adds that, you may not have quite picked up on my voice. It's Paris Hilton, the real Paris Hilton, not the archetype that you've come to know for so long. Thanks, Harry's wife. The two aren't alone. Lucky us. This episode is joined by journalist Claire Malone and comedian Elisa Schlesinger, apparently to help Harry's wife unearth who is really in on the joke. Newsflash, it's none of you. 
Malone leads off by bitching about the New York Post over a headline that ran 20 years ago, Bimbo Summit, it blared, with a photo of Paris Hilton and Britney Spears and Lindsay Lohan. Malone disdainfully observes that the three women that were young, beautiful and labelled as party girls back in the early 2000s, bimbo, is an insult for women, she adds. Coburn is used to Harry's wife's attempts to rewrite history, but it now seems that her guests are falling victim to their own truth. For in the aughts, these three women were, quite literally, the party girls. Paris Hilton once said that she would, that she invented getting paid to party, adding, I get half a million just to show up at parties. My life is, like, really, really fun. And what, are, what would archetypes be without a long-winded soliloquy from Harry's wife about Harry's wife? In this episode, she tells the story of her short stint as a briefcase girl on the game show Deal or No Deal. She starts by talking about how she appreciated the job because it meant she could pay her bills, only to add that she quit with this pit in my stomach knowing that I was so much more than what was being objectified on the stage. I didn't like feeling forced to be all lux and little substance. And that's how it felt for me at the time, being reduced to this specific archetype. Coburn wonders if this is a running theme in Harry's wife's life, walking out on a job because not every aspect of it suits her. Well, at least this time, with the help of Spotify, she won't need to worry about paying the bills. So, no sympathy there either, noting her propensity for running away from things as a consequence of, of course, when it threatens her sense of control, although the author doesn't realise that, but maybe maybe there's some support from the ever-reliable Hello! Phoebe Tatum is tasked with the job as a junior writer. It would appear that everybody else has fucked off. And it's down to you, Phoebe, as the junior writer to perhaps save Harry's wife. The Duchess of Sussex made a candid confession about her time on the US version of Deal or No Deal, where she was forced to be all lux and little substance. Don't think she was forced to be that. That is what she is. Speaking to fashion influencer Paris Hilton on the latest episode of her Archetypes podcast, the Suits actress reminisced about her time on the show as the briefcase girl. In the eye-opening episode, how is it eye-opening when there's nothing to watch? Oh dear, Phoebe, you failed already. The mum of two unpacked the bimbo trope before reflecting on her own experiences on the set of Deal or No Deal. It then talks about the spray town and vouchers, the very cookie-cutter idea that she ended up quitting the show, yada yada. And by the way, I was surrounded by smart women on that stage with me, but that wasn't the focus of why we were there. And then it talks about her being reduced to this specific archetype. Then she reminisces about working in Argentina. Years before crossing paths with Prince Harry, Harry's wife held briefcase number 24 during her time as a model on the US version of Deal or No Deal in 2006. In a bid to pursue her acting dreams, the budding actress accepted the job while studying at Northwestern University. The job could pay my bills. I had income. I was part of the union. I had health insurance. It was great, she said. So... At the time, she thought it was great because she could pay the bills and that she had an income and she was part of the union and she had health insurance. And the pictures certainly show that she was enjoying herself. So not even hello has saved her this time, but has basically brought up a quote from when she was on the job talking about how wonderful it was, which demonstrates once again, Harry's wife, your hypocrisy, your contradictory nature, none of which surprises any of us, and your attempts once again to rewrite history. All the behaviours that are to be expected with a narcissist. Archetypes continues to show the own goals of Harry's wife as well as showcasing her showcasing rather her narcissism for all of the world to see. I'm H. G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.